Billah, anyone who associates partner with Allah, فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة. Allah will make Jannah haram for him. وما وهو النار and fire shall be his dwelling place. For ma wahun nar wa mal zalimin min ansar and for the wrong doers there will be no help. Shirk is the biggest sin. And imagine the small child is calling that good Muslim a mushrik. Who's to blame? Between you and Allah, Allah will not make a mistake. What about the other people? What about the other Muslims? How are they to identify you? discuss what should be the label for the ladies in Islam. <clears throat> the best verse I can quote is from Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, which says that, say to the believing woman that they should lower the gaze and guard the modesty, to display not the beauty except what that appears thereof and to draw the veil over the bosom, except in front of the fathers, the sons, the husbands, and a big list of meram, the close relatives, who she cannot marry, is given, besides the husband. Besides these people, you should maintain your hijab. And for more clarification, you have to refer to the Sahih Hadiths. There are six points for hijab. The first point is the extent. The first point is the only point which differs between the woman and the men. The extent for the woman is that she should cover her complete body. The only part that can be seen, not should be seen, are the face and the hand up to the wrist. These two parts of the body can be seen, not should be seen. If they want to cover it, Alhamdulillah, it's not compulsory. The extent for the men is nailed to the knee. Only this part, the first criteria differs between the men and the women. All the remaining five criteria are the same for the men and the women. If a person dies as a mushrik, he will never be forgiven. Quran also says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 72. Inna hum yushrik billah. Anyone who associates partners with Allah, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ جَنَّةً Allah will make Jannah haram for him. فَمَا وَهُ النَّارِ And fire shall be his dwelling place. فَمَا وَهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلْظَّلِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْسَارِ And for the wrongdoers, there will be no help. Shirk is the biggest sin. And imagine that small child is calling that good Muslim a mushrik. Who's to blame? Between you and Allah, Allah will not make a mistake. What about the other people? What about the other Muslims? How are they to identify you? Let's discuss what should be the label for the ladies in Islam. <clears throat> the best verse I can quote is from Surah Nur. Chapter number 24, verse number 31, which says that say to the believing woman that they should lower the gaze and guard the modesty to display not the beauty except what that appears thereof and to draw the veil over the bosom except in front of the fathers, the sons, the husbands, and a big list of meram, the close relatives who she cannot marry is given, besides the husband. Besides these people, you should maintain your hijab. And for more clarification, we have to refer to the Sahih Hadiths. There are six points for hijab. The first point is the extent. The first point is the only point which differs between the woman and the men. The extent for the woman is that she should cover her complete body. The only part 
that can be seen, not should be seen, are the face and the hand up to the wrist. These two parts of the body can be seen, not should be seen. If they want to cover it, Alhamdulillah, it's not compulsory. The extent for the men is nailed to the knee. Only this part, the first criteria differs between the men and the women. All the remaining five criteria are the same for the men and the women. The second criteria is the clothes should not be so tight that it reveals the figure, that, that the curves can be seen. The clothes you wear should be loose. Some ladies, the way hijab, they may wear the burqa, it's tight fitting. That's not Islamic. The third criteria, the clothes you wear should not be transparent. You should not be able to see through the clothes. You may wear, you may cover a complete body, you may wear a loose gown, but if it's made of a thin material, it's an Islamic. <coughs> Same way, with the gents, they can't wear anything which is tight in the portion between the navel and the knee. They can't wear stretch jeans. Normal trousers, fine. Stretch jeans, you cannot wear. Coming to the fourth category. The fourth criteria is that you should not wear clothes which are so glamorous that it attracts the opposite sex. Too much stories and colors which attracts the opposite sex should be avoided. The fifth category is that it should not resemble that of the unbeliever. You can't wear a cross or a home sign or put a tika that resembles a sign of a Christian or a Hindu. You can't wear any identity which is that of the other religion. And the last criteria is it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. A man cannot wear that which pertains to a woman, neither can a woman wear that which pertains to a man. Men cannot wear earrings. If you go to America, there you find the gays, they wear one earring in the right ear, one earring. You know? Even the gays are proud to identify themselves. They're wearing one earring. Imagine these homosexuals. They are proud to call themselves gays. They identify themselves. But we Muslims, shame on us. With all the good deeds that we have with us, with all the truth that we have, with all the haq, we are ashamed to identify ourselves as Muslims. Shame on us. Those gays, those homosexuals, they are proud to call themselves gays. in the Quran which is indicating the label for the woman it's in Surah Ahzab chapter number 33 verse number 59 it says O Prophet tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that they should cast their outer garment when they go abroad means they should wear an outer covering a cloak or a coat when they go out it is more convenient for them and they will be known and not molested. Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. It says that when the believing women, when they go out, they should wear an outer garment, a cloak. Because they will be recognized as Muslims and they will not be molested. That's what the Quran says. And the best example I can give you is that Suppose there are two twin sisters who are equally beautiful. Both are equally beautiful. One is wearing the Islamic hijab. Her complete body is covered. The only part that is seen is the face and the hands. And the other sister, she is wearing a short or a mini. If both of them are walking down the street and if around the corner there is a hooligan who is waiting for a catch, there is a ruffian who is going to tease a girl. Who will he tease? Will he tease the girl who is wearing the Islamic hijab or will he tease the girl who is wearing a short or a mini? But natural, he will tease the girl who is wearing a short or a mini. The Quran rightly says, prevent, to prevent them from being molested. But unfortunately,
unfortunately, even the burqa has been maligned. If you're wearing a burqa, if the lady is wearing a burqa, she's coming from Bendy Bazaar. Partly we are to blame. Unfortunately, there are a few of the Muslim ladies who wear the burqa, but they use vulgar language. They use cheap language. So, the good Muslim women, they don't want to be identified as coming from Bendy Bazaar. Therefore, they prevent from wearing the burqa. Same with the men. They don't be identified from Dongri. So they give new names. Where do you come from? Erskine Road. They don't say Bindi Bazaar. Erskine Road. No one knows where the Erskine Road. Erskine Road, Bombay 3. Finish. They don't have Bindi Bazaar. Instead of mentioning Dongri, there's a Tandil Street. Tandil Street sounds like an English name. Some Muslims say, where do you stay? I stay in UK. <laughs> do you know what UK? Umar Hadi. <laughs> Why? We are ashamed. I don't blame them. We are to blame. Same way, the Muslim women, sometimes, they don't like wearing the burqa. You should wear the burqa properly. It should be loose. It should not be see-through. And but natural, besides the hijab of the body, there should be hijab of the eyes and the tongue. Hijab of the eyes and the tongue is more important. Quran says, lower your gaze. If you do an outward hijab, but your deeds are not right, it's useless. So what the sister should do, they should wear a proper hijab and behave well. Some may say that I don't mind wearing, wearing the hijab, but you know, I'm living in an awkward area. See, Bombay, it's very easy. Bombay is very easy. Cosmopolitan city. Pune, difficult. It's a stronghold of the Hindus. We can't wear hijab there. Take the Kolapur. Kolapur you can't wear. See, these are all petty excuses. I can give thousand and one petty excuses. Petty excuses. If you analyze, there are thousands of Muslim women who are wearing the hijab in Pune as well as in Kolapur. What's the problem? The problem is in your mind. Some may say that, see, if we wear this hijab, we are the odd person out. The moment we walk on the streets, all the eyes are focused at us. Ah, that's the girl. They look at you. We are the odd person out. I do agree. An odd person always attracts attention. But the attention that you attract, you aren't doing it deliberately. But the people that look at you, they look at you with modesty, not with lust. It's, bet, it's much better that a few few more people look at you with modesty than a few people look at you with lust. It's preferable. Those that look at you because they're wearing the hijab is with modesty. It, it creates miracles. If you analyze any Muslim lady who's in the hijab and behaves decently, the moment she goes in the bus, even the non-Muslim will offer her the seat. If the bus is full. But natural, as I said, wearing the cloak, wearing the coat, it's much more preferable than only wearing a shalwar kameez and a scarf. Because shalwar kameez are worn by many people. And many of the Punjabis also, they wear shalwar kameez and they take a orni. So if you want to identify yourself, it is preferable that you wear a coat. The Arabic word given in the Quran is Jilbab and then with the scarf. If you want to cover your face, Alhamdulillah, no objection at all, but it's not compulsory. In our mixed society today, the names that we have, especially the surnames, they are common to various religions. For example, if a Muslim is coming from the Kokan region, his surname may be Thakur. You have a Muslim Thakur, you have a Hindu Thakur. His surname may be Mukadam. You may have a Muslim Mukadam and a Hindu Mukadam. His surname may be Naik. A Muslim Naik as well as a Hindu Naik. Surname may be Pawaskar, Dhamaskar, all are common Hindu as well as Muslim. 
if you go to the region of Gujarat, where you have the Patels, the Muslim Patel, the Hindu Patel. You have the Desai, the Muslim Desai, the Hindu Desai. You have the Shah, the Muslim Shah, the Hindu Shah. If you go abroad, you may have heard of the famous Kari who comes South Africa, Cape Town. Rashid Brown, Brown. It sounds like a European name. Then you have surnames like Johnson. I basically feel that the surname it indicates from which locality you come and which family tree you belong to. So if you have a surname, saying Thakur or Naik, huh, this person is a Kokni. His father is so and so, his grandfather is so and so, I know the Thakur family. So the surname indicates from which locality you come and what is the family tree. But if you have such surname which can be mixed with a non-Muslim surname, you have to be very careful. You have to see to it that your first name is a very clear name. It clearly indicates that you are a Muslim. If the surname is a little bit doubtful, the name should indicate very clearly that you are a Muslim. It should be somewhat like Abdullah, Muhammad, Zakir, Ahmad, Sultan. All these names, no non-Muslim will ever think or a Muslim will ever think that these are non-Muslim. You will never find a non-Muslim by the name of Muhammad, by the name of Sultan, by the name of Ahmad. Never. So if the surname is confusing, the name should be very clear. It should not also be confusing like Danish. Danish is found in Muslims as well as Parsi. For example, Kashmira, found in Muslims and Hindus. For example, Shela, found in Muslims as well as Hindus. If the name is confusing, it's preferable to change the name. The name is used more. The surname is the identity for your family background and the place from where you come. And the second name also. That the father's name, as far as possible, should also be clear cut. For example, Muhammad Abdul Karim Naik. Fine, Muhammad cannot be a Hindu. Abdul Karim cannot be a Hindu. Naik may be, but here the chances are that more is a Muslim. But some people take undue advantage of such names. Though the name will be very good. For example, Muhammad Patel. But when they write, they write M. Patel. So people will think that we are Hindus. Among Hindus, they write M. Patel. Among Muslim invitations, they write Muhammad Patel. Two phase Jamtins. Two phase Jamtins. Don't take undue advantage. They are misusing the name. If the label shows their intent, wear it. Then you go to school. Every school has a uniform. If you wear a grey pant and a white shirt with grey stripes, you are coming from St. Peter's school. If you wear a white shirt and a purple trousers, you are coming from Anza school. Every school has a particular uniform. In that school, the prefects, they wear a badge. Prefect or head girl or head boy. They are proud to identify themselves as prefects, therefore they wear the badge. Prefect. Same way. Same with the doctors. The doctors, before they name, they write DR full stop, meaning doctor. Why? Doctor is a higher degree as compared to a plain graduate. First they were Mr. Now they became doctor. Because we are doctors, there's no problem at all in, in identifying yourself that I'm a doctor. I've got the degree. And on the card they put the sign, cross sign. And outside also. On the clinic they put the cross sign. Why? If someone is going on the road and if he requires any medical aid, they can stop the car with the sign of a cross. Just imagine, suppose a person who is not a doctor, if he puts a sign outside his office, a cross sign and a DR in front of him, he's not a doctor, he's a fake. And suppose you are finding for a doctor, if your mother is sick, and if you go to that person, let's see my mother is sick, and then you realize he is not a medical doctor. The cross outside his shop 
for the fake time. You will surely get irritated at him. Maybe in that time your mother may expire. Cheating is not allowed in Islam. Whatever you are, wear that same label. Don't wear a wrong label. The label that you wear helps you in several ways. It helps you in several ways. For example, if a Muslim is wearing the label of a beard and a cap and walking on the road, if any non-Muslim want any spiritual help, they can identify. Ha! There's the Muslim wearing a cap and a beard. If I want spiritual help, I have to go to him. If the person who I can trust is a Muslim, that person with a cap and beard is an honest person. Because the religion says that you should be honest, you should be kind, you should be just, you should not cheat. Besides helping the non-Muslims, it also helps us Muslims. The moment we see another person wearing a cap and a beard, and the moment you identify him to be a Muslim, you want to wish him salam. When you wish salam, you get sawab. And when you reply back the greeting, again you get, again you get sawab. If you go abroad, suppose you go to Delhi, if you go to Delhi, or any foreign place, and if you want to offer salah, you don't know where is the mosque. But naturally you can't ask any Tom, Dick and Harry on the road, where is the mosque? He will not know. You will search for a Muslim. After you have identified him to be a Muslim, will you ask him, Bhai sahab, masjid ki hai? Where is the mosque? He will help you. When you go abroad, when you go to England, America, or to places like Delhi, you want to have food. We Muslims have halal food. Where are you going to find halal food in a foreign place? But natural, you will try and find a Muslim and then ask him, is there any good Muslim restaurant close by? He'll help you. This label helps you in several ways. And there are several labels you can have. Besides having label on your body, you can have you can have labels. For example, when you enter the house, the moment you enter the house, sometimes you see posters of film stars, Amitabh Bachchan. You see photographs of Dilip Kumar. All false idols. The moment you enter the house, there should be a sign. For example, Hada bin Fazli Rabbi. This is the bounty of my Lord. Immediately the person recognizes this is a Muslim house. <coughs> if a non-Muslim enters this auditorium, he will immediately realize, ah, this is something like Arabic. He may not know what it is, but he will realize this auditorium belongs to a Muslim. And he will what is that? What is this? So I say, this is in Nadina in the Lail Islam. It means it's the verse of the Quran. It's the verse of the Quran from Suleh Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number 19, which says, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah, in the sight of God, is Islam. The non Muslim says, Oh, is it so? Only religion acceptable is Islam. He said, Yes. It gives you an opportunity to do da'wah. The label shows your intent, wear it. You get several labels in the market. For example, this is a label. It's a dua from Surah Zukhruf. That when you write, it says Subhan, Subhan al Lavi, Sakr al Nahaza. And the dua continues that when you write, you ask for protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can put this up in your vehicle. This label. You can have labels everywhere. And there are several labels that are available here. For example, prayer keeps together. Read the Quran. Say no to alcohol and gambling. The Quran. Chapter 2, verse 219. Don't get caught dead without Islam. This is a label which is also put behind the vehicle, behind the van of Islamic Propagation Center in Durban, the organization of Sheikh Ahmed Didad. Don't get caught dead without Islam. Allah is just a prayer away. The beautiful labels, beautiful. Give thanks in all things, for this is the will of Allah. Islam makes the difference. 
Recycle the Quran. It's a verse from the Quran. From Surah Araf, chapter 7, verse number 31. It's in short, recycle the Quran. Welcome to Islam. Islam, the way to victory. Give thanks in all things, for this is the will of Allah. <coughs> the Quran has the answer. Allah is our protector. A man's mind plans his way, but Allah directs his steps. Prayer, it works. Muslims live by the word of Allah. Do you say your prayers? The best thing you can spend in your life, sorry, the best thing you can spend on your children is time. One who in search of an honest earning is like a warrior in the way of Allah. <laughs> Worship the creator, not the creation. A very beautiful sign. Worship the creator not the creation, especially for India. Read the Holy Quran, broaden your knowledge. No day in a person's life should pass without an act of charity. Beautiful, beautiful. No compulsion in Islam. Islam means, Islam enjoins universal brotherhood. Say no to alcohol and gambling. There are various labels. These are not available here. They are imported. But inshallah, if it's possible, or if time permits, we will have some of them reproduced here. What we have in the IRF at present is a small sticker. Al-Quran, the last and final revelation of God. Read it. The most positive book in the world. A proclamation to humanity. A fountain of mercy and wisdom, a warning to the heedless, a guide to the erring, an assurance to those in doubt, a solace to the suffering, a hope to those in despair. This sticker is available in the last set of the Islamic Research Foundation. But today, anyone who wants is most welcome to have one. We have two types. One which is put directly in the front, and the other is a reverse sticker. It is put behind the glass. You can put it in your car, you can put it in a showcase, you can put beneath your table if it has a glass top. These stickers are available absolutely free. You can, it is your pleasure that you can have any one of them from the counter after the lecture is over. The several signs. If the label shows your intent, you should wear it. It gives you an opening to do da'wah. I would like to end my talk by giving a quotation from the Quran, from Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, which says, al hasna, waja ahsan. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching, and argue with them, and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Wa akhru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank <laughs> you.